Um, so we're going to talk um, about trends in uh, hardcover fiction titles on the New York Times bestseller list. Um, so this is mainly the work of uh, Geza and Taylor. And in absence of Taylor, uh, I have the pleasure of giving you the introduction. Um, so this does not work. Ah, here, here we go. And then uh, Geza is going to walk you through the results and the limitations of this method. Um, so bas the basic assumption we have is that book titles change. So if you look at Robinson Crusoe, for example, the life and strange surprising adventures of Robinson Crusoe, of Torek, Mariner, who lived, Aiden, you get the idea. It's a very long title. Um, and then we have some newer examples. Skirts Like Us is just three words, and Rushdie's Fury is just one word. Though, um, of course, it's easy to come up with examples from the Robinson Crusoe time frame with just a few words, especially if you look at uh, poem collections and so on. So this is not like a general um, uh, thing, um, but overall, um, some people have some identified some trends, and we wanted to follow up on that. So what is a title? So basically, Moretti claims that the title is an entry point for, to a book. It is half sign, half ad. So the title basically has a commercial function. Uh, Bartley and LaHaye um, claim that this is a referential paratext. So it refers to the content of the book. Um, it gives a guide to interpretation. And it directs the reader's expectation. And a title typically contains features that attract readers, such as gossip, morality, pleasures, mental processes. And um, Jeanette uh, sums it up uh, quite nicely with this uh, small typology that I title identifies the text of a book, it describes its content, it holds a connotative, connotative value, so it has some kind of emotive uh, function, and it should attract readers. Um, also see McConnell and Vakari on reader attraction. So how do people select books and libraries and so on. So there's um, some body of work on titles. So uh, some are on news headlines. Uh, there's a lot of work on scientific uh, titles. Um, for fiction, um, there is uh, Moretti, 2009. He worked on British novels. Uh, from the 18th century, 19th century, and uh, basically he figures that titling practices follow the book market and also the cultural, moral, aesthetic preferences of readers. Um, he's worked on 7,000 titles and found, for example, that with a growing book market, titles became shorter. Um, so Patra said all, um, from two years ago looked at European novels and they look mainly at named entities and syntax, where does the entity stand and which roles do the entities have. That was just with 798 titles. There's uh, work from 1995 on French literature that looked even back to the Middle Ages to 1995. They found, for example, longer titles in the 18th century, though they were only working also with 2,000 titles over this large time frame. Um, there is um, some work on bestsellers, and Helgason, for example, claims in their introduction to the edited volume that bestsellers provide insight into the book trade, the marketplace, the reading public, and society in general. And um, often bestsellers are looked at bestsellers versus non-bestsellers, so what are the characteristics of bestsellers? And there is um, uh, Archon Joker is a book on the bestseller code. Karina Fadal and Oskam, who's in, sitting in the audience, uh, just wrote a book on the riddle of literary quality and the project that went before that, that I put all into the et al. there. Um, then we have, there's an article from Ashok et al., and they uh, tried to predict um, um, the success of novels based on grammatical features, stylistic features. Um, and um, there is one that we found also that, that uh, was a diachronic studies study on a fairly small data set, mostly qualitative, uh, by a sociologist um, who well claims that bestsellers are a social rather than a literary phenomenon, which goes in line with the first comment up there. And she looked at uh, shifting cultural values um, that uh, in the 1950s you have this upcoming American dream, so consumerization and uh, American affluence, and that which she found a representation in popular fiction, basically. So our research questions are the following. So how do descriptive and connotative and 
by extension attraction features, features uh, change over time in fiction bestseller titles? Can we find some significant trends? And how useful is a lexicon-based approach to detect features in fiction titles? And our contribution is then, uh, we extended the corpus of New York Times bestseller titles. Um, we did an exploratory trend analysis with grammatical, thematic, and psychological categories. And in the end, we're doing a bit of a qualitative evaluation of the method. So the corpus uh, we have are um, New York Times bestsellers from 2000 to 2020. Um, so basically, a title is assigned to a year if it uh, came out that year. So if it entered the bestseller list in that year, it is included for that particular year. So there was a data set on Data World uh, that included February 2011 to July 2018, and we extended it to the whole 20-year time frame uh, by manual selection. So Taylor went through the New York Times bestseller list and copied every title. Um, and we're looking at hardcover fiction. So these are new publications. So they haven't been around, so you would assume that paperback gets a, a couple more editions. So these are when the books actually came out. Um, and we do have um, a couple hundred uh, titles per year and uh, goes up to a thousand tokens. So this is actually not a lot, but we'll talk about the size of the corpus uh, later. But overall is 4,000 titles. Um, so, to the method, so we are using a lexicon named Luke, so the Linguistic Inquiry and Word Count by Penny Baker. And uh, the way this works, so this is a lexicon with psychological word associations that has been used for mental health studies, for example, to detect depression or suicide and so on. Um, and the uh, words are um, in hierarchical categories. So for example, the word cried is in the category affect, it is in the category negative emotion, it signifies sadness, but it's also a verb, and it signifies the past tense. Um, and then you see a couple of um, other categories. So you see, for example, space, that's around, over, up. You see social processes like talk, us, friend, or Tentative speak is maybe, perhaps, guess, or causative speak, because, effect, hence, and so on. Um, and we'll see the, um, the uh, significant categories in a second. So basically what we are doing is uh, we take this um, uh, lexicon and for every title we match uh, the categories we get and we calculate the relative frequency for every category for a given year. Um, and we also later look at uh, the length of the titles and uh, the unigram frequencies. And then we're estimating um, the trend of these frequencies uh, by, using, by correlating the, frequent, the relative frequencies with the year uh, using Spearman and Rho. So we should get a value between minus one and plus one. Um, so plus one uh, signifies a rising trend and uh, a negative score should signify a negative trend. And then we're checking um, if this trend is significant with a permutation test. So we're basically shuffling um, the data points and we assume that the null hypothesis, there is no trend, that's the shuffled one. And then we have a two-tail test and that shows, okay, if we have a trend, then this should be significantly different at a 5% threshold, right? So we include every category that um, is under a 5% threshold. Right, so I give this over to you. All right, uh, so you can see the categories that displayed significant trends in this table. Um, you can see the category, do I have a, yes. So you can see the um, category name, the value of Spearman Rho, uh, the p-value, and example words um, for this category. As you can see, almost all trends are positive and moderately strong, um, except for religion, which, which displays uh, a downward trend. Example words in the religion category include uh, Christmas, devil, or faith. The category social processes comprises the categories family, friends, and humans, just as all non-first-person singular personal pronouns and um, verbs that suggest human interaction. So we can see an increase in social processes, but not surprisingly also in some of its subcategories, um, 
personal pronouns um, and family. Generally speaking, our analysis suge could suggest that titles of best-selling fiction books increasingly contain features that previous research has shown to be appealing to readers. As we've mentioned earlier, people like titles alluding to gossip and mental processes. Gossip and mental processes, processes could potentially be reflected in the loop category social and cognitive processes for which we find increases. Titling practices also seem to increasingly reflect topics that Archer and Jockers, who we have mentioned previously, have shown to be characteristic um, of bestsellers, human closeness and human connection. Again, I'm referring to the increase in social processes here. All right, um, so let's look more into detail at the two strongest trends in our data. As we've already mentioned, um, social categories dominate the significant upward trends. You can see them on the left. Um, the totality of social processes is indicated by the blue line and rises from a relative share of 5% uh, in 2000 to a relative share of 11% um, in 2000 and 2019. Um, Orange indicates personal pronouns, and in green you can see family terms. As you can see, categories can have rather different shares in our data. That is why the family trends looks quite underwhelming in this plot. Um, admittedly, it also does not display the strongest upward trend, I think around like 0.4 the row value. Yes. Um, so close reading of titles referring to social categories indicate that this increase is mostly attributable to interpersonal matters, e.g. romance or coming of age, rather than social issues. Mm, so an example for a title that is more likely to be found in later years is um, Sisters Like Us. On the other hand, um, the share of religious terms has decreased significantly since 2000. Um, we can observe a peak in 2008 um, but that does not impact the overall downward trend. Um, we are less likely to observe a title such as Sacred Sins in 2020 than in 2000 in our corpus. Um, sociological research has shown that US American religiousness is declining, so this finding might help contextualize the decrease of terms referring to religion. Um, the unigrams with the five biggest shares in the entire corpus are girl, dark, death, night, and one. Um, the fact that we observe dark, death, and night so often could be a genre effect, since mystery and thriller books are among the best-selling fiction genres. In this plot, you can see um, the ranks of these unigrams over the years. As they are the top five unigrams, they, usually, they are usually quite high up, with a rank between one and five, but that is not always the case. You can also observe trends here. For example, the unigram girl um, in dark blue um, does not uh, even appear in some earlier years, but then shows up rather consistently um, in top ranks. Running the same trend analysis as described for loop categories, we find a significant upward trend. So we are not the first ones that have observed that girl titles seem to be very popular. Several different explanations have been suggested. Um, first of all, most fiction readers are women, so mentioning girl in a title creates relatability. Um, curiously, the girls talked about in titles are often women themselves. Um, the use of girl instead of woman might suggest that something will happen. There's potentially some growth in the future. Um, it might as well just be a case of seemingly successful titling practices being copied. All right, um, so stu some studies we've mentioned earlier find trends um, in title lengths, so we've studied them as well. We examined the length of titles as measured in word counts, but find no substantial change. Um, the width of these violins um, corresponds to the estimated density of data points in each year. Uh, orange lines indicate averages and blue lines indicate um, medians. Most titles are between two and three words long, and the distribution of title lengths length does not change a lot between years. So our research has some limitations. First of all, regarding our data set, um, we know that the New York Times bestseller list is based on sales data, but we do not know much more about that. Um, how the list is compiled is a secret, and we are just basically just following along with what editors claim to be bestsellers. Additionally, the size of our data set is limited. We have around um, 4,000 titles over 20 years, so some effects can be rather small. For example, the trend in the 
ascent category is backed up by only two titles over the entire two decades. And since they happen to be in later years, um, the trend analysis outputs a significant upward trend, which does not really mean a lot. Um, the granularity of our data is also limited. We are looking at years and therefore cannot detect seasonal effects. Um, manual inspection shows us that they seem to exist, though. A majority of years um, feature Christmas titles at the end of the year. Um, regarding our methodology, using Spearman's row is not the most sof sophisticated method for trend estimation. For example, it can be advisable to check for autocorrelation first, that is whether values are correlated with their previous values. Uh, if that were the case, there would also be a Spearman's trend test that has been adapted to account for autocorrelation. Um, we have not yet, we have not performed a confound analysis yet. Potentially variations in um, length of titles or in the popularity of certain genres could have an influence on certain trends as well. It would be also interesting to have um, sales numbers to check whether, for example, religious titles sell worse over time and therefore their share in best-selling titles goes down. Um, generally, we can't really say much on what might have caused certain changes. Finally, there exist limitations with regard to the look categories. Um, religion matches often do not signify titles with concrete religious content, but rather we find um, metaphorical uses of religiously connoted words. Um, for example, in 2008, we have um, four titles mentioning Christmas, three uh, titles mentioning devils, um, two titles men mentioning angels, and so on. Um, close reading shows that, for example, we find the mentions of devils in titles such as blue-eyed devil um, or devil may care. So instead of um, describing actual religious content, um, here the mentions of uh, religious terms serve to illustrate some kind of moral ambig ambiguity. Um, so finally, um, the matches in the filler category are misleading. Normally, words in this category are hesitation markers. In our case, matches in this category are exclusively due to the word like, and while like definitely can be a hesitation marker, um, in our corpus it is used exclusively as a preposition meaning similar to. Take for example, no place like home or sisters like us. Um, like does not function as a filler here. All right, so to sum up, um, we have presented an exploratory study on trends in best-selling fiction titles over 20 years. We have shown trends uh, of psychological, thematic, and structural features in best-selling fiction titles. Social categories have been increasingly adopted, while religious titles, often, often merely religiously connoted titles, have been declining. We, find, we found no significant changes, changes in length of titles and that certain unigrams are almost always relevant. For future research, it would be interesting to expand the data set, for example, by um, expanding the time frame to study more long-term trends. Reviewers have also suggested to inv investigate group-based differences such as um, best-selling versus non-best-selling titles or between genres, um, so that could, could yield interesting results as well. Finally, future work might address the limitations we've mentioned and, for example, increase the granularity of our data and also include sales numbers. Um, thank you for your attention.